Well, research of psychedelics dates back to the 1950s, actually the, the, the 1940s, when first Albert Hoffman conducted a, uh, uh, an auto experiment in his lab, and then um, uh, several years later, a psychiatrist at uh, Sandoz Pharmaceutical explored some of the range of effects and sent out uh, samples to research psychiatrists uh, in Europe and the United States. And by the early mid-50s, it was becoming an object of uh, great interest among some of the leading psychiatric researchers in the world. And I would call this kind of the, from the 50s into the early mid-60s was really the golden age of psychedelic research. Unfortunately, in the early 1960s, um, it became more of a social cultural issue. Uh, some investigators, particularly uh, Tim Leary, um, began to uh, attract a great deal of media attention to what he was doing. Uh, Tim really enjoyed being in the spotlight, really um, uh, got very uh, energized in calling attention to himself, and unfortunately it wasn't always the right kind of attention. He was a very provocative individual, and the message as it was heard by the mainstream culture was an exhortation to the young people uh, in the country to experiment with uh, substances and turn off and tune out the, the, the mainstream culture along with their ideals. And I think in many respects this was a, a misunderstanding of, uh, of really what Leary had to say. It took simply the most provocative statements. Leary actually did some very fine early research along with uh, Ralph Metzner and others that he worked with, but uh, by the mid-late 60s, uh, psychedelics had swept through the culture in the U.S. and in, in Europe. A, uh, a, a counterculture had identified itself with uh, different values, different way of presenting to the world. Um, mostly the counterculture consisted of young people, college-age people, uh, or, in, or in the 20s. It was quite an alarming phenomenon to the authority figures, to parents, I think, in general, to older people. And I think they, they saw that there was dramatic change occurring in the culture. This is also a time of a very uh, acrimonious debate over the wisdom of uh, our country leading a war in Southeast Asia. And uh, uh, individuals who took psychedelics, who then saw themselves from an altered perspective, saw the world around them from an altered perspective, often went on to speak out against the war. But it also led psychedelics the appearance of being a very controversial issue. And, um, and also psychedelics were perceived as catalysts for change, which I think in many respects they are. So um, by the late 1960s, research was pretty much starting to get shut down across the board um, in the U.S. By the early 1970s, all research had been terminated and would not resume again uh, for some decades. Now, the role of the Hefter Research Institute in this would be, the Hefter was uh, uh, founded in 1993. Uh, Dave Nichols was the president and the one who brought a group of uh, researchers uh, together, uh, myself, Dennis McKenna, George Greer, Mark Geyer, later Franz Vollenweider, a Swiss researcher, joined the group. And, and still later, um, uh, philanthropists such as uh, the late Bob Wallace joined. Uh, Robert Barnhart was invited to join the board. Uh, Betsy Gordon as well. And they've been very generous in helping to support some of Hefter's projects. The Hefter Institute really is devoted to uh, f uh, helping to facilitate the development of, of protocols of psychedelics within academic medical institutions. And uh, so th the Hefter Board has been actively involved in helping investigators construct their protocols and also uh, helping to identify funding sources, keeping in mind that for the most part clinical research with psychedelics uh, while we have been able to get all government regulatory approvals, uh, government funding agencies have not considered this a priority funding area. So all funding has had to be raised from private sources.